Okay. So, um, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Emanuele Enrico. I'm a researcher in the quantum metrology and nanotechnology division of the National Metrology Institute of Italy, that is located in Turin. Turin. And today, uh, my talk is uh, focused on um, the aspect covering Josephson traveling wave parametric amplifiers as non classical light source uh, for microwave quantum illumination. And uh, Josephson traveling wave parametric amplifier has been already covered several times in this workshop. And of course, they are uh, interesting uh, and they have an interesting application in um, uh, amplifying small signals. Uh, near quantum limit, and essentially they act as nonlinear metamaterials that um, promote um, interaction between different modes in the microwave regime at cryogenic temperature. But what I want to uh, cover in this talk is the uh, ability, the capability of this nonlinear metamaterial to produce non-classical radiation, for example, um, a couple of entangled photons that can be exploited, for example, to um, uh, produce and uh, promote the protocols for microwave quantum illumination or the uh, heralding source uh, protocols for the calibration of a single microwave photon detectors that are um, developed in the framework of the, our Supergalact project, that is the um, project uh, that um, organized this workshop. And um, essentially, the uh, couple, um, the entangled photons uh, produced by these traveling wave parametric amplifiers can be exploited to trigger um, and uh, the calibration of um, uh, two detectors, single microwave photon detectors, uh, in order to, to um, prevent the, um, the need uh, to have a single microwave photon source. Uh, uh, predictable. So, uh, in, the, in the framework of the Supergalax project, we, we are in, involved in the um, realization and modeling of this kind of um, heralded microwave photon source. And uh, it turns out that uh, the protocols for the uh, heralding source is almost similar um, and share uh, the same physics uh, regarding the quantum illumination protocols. And the quantum illumination protocol um, is maximized when the um, signal in the idler produced by the source uh, comes from the uh, vacuum uh, interaction with this nonlinear material. So the, the vacuum state produced by nonlinear interaction is called two mode squeeze vacuum. And, and this two mode squeeze, squeeze vacuum can be exploited as a, a source of entangled radiation in order to recover information, for example, for, from a target that has uh, been um, interacting with this, the signal tone and, and that um, partially reflected um, interact with the idler that is stored in the uh, measurement setup. And by correlating uh, measurement um, in the receiver, it is possible to recover the information on the target region. And with the same uh, concept, it is possible to um, realize, for example, uh, a quantum radar and where the microwave photons uh, exit and travel in at room temperature. And there are, uh, there have been several um, proposals and few um, experimental demonstration of this protocol. But what I, what I'm most interested in here is to um, explain how this protocol can be exploited to realize uh, an heralded um, single photon source for the calibration of single microwave photon detectors that, can, of course, can be used for uh, the detection of axons. And in, in the case of the microwave um, um, single photon detectors. And uh, the idea comes from the uh, paper of 2012 from a group uh, led by Giorgio Brida that uh, essentially exploit a nonlinear metamaterial here where a pump tone uh, is split into um, an entangled pairs. And by means of a beam splitter, uh, it is possible to um, um, essentially calibrate two different uh, single uh, photon detector 
um, one each other by correlating uh, coincidence um, measurement of these two detectors. So it is uh, what, what is uh, important here is um, that um, the calibration of these two uh, detectors can be performed independently, and there's no need to um, um, know at a, at a, uh, a priori uh, the number of photons emitted by the source here. And this nonlinear metamaterial in a, in a microwave regime are, of course, uh, built um, in a coplanar uh, structure by means of uh, superconducting materials, as probably most of you already knows. And at the core of these nonlinearities um, stays the Josephson junction, that is the um, uh, that composes the meta atom, that is of course nonlinear and non dissipative. And there are several um, fabrication technologies. Uh, the main um, two are um, built on niobium technology or, or aluminum technology. And essentially, uh, it is possible to fabricate this Josephson junction, for example, by means of the, the, the most common technologies by means of um, electron beam evaporation. And what I, what I want to stress here is that um, essentially, um, the Josephson traveling wave um, looks like um, an array of, of meta atom of different nonlinear elements. And here you can see that this coplanar waveguide that contains meta atoms is essentially a repetition of Josephson junction uh, in parallel with, with uh, um, uh, geometrical inductance in, in, a, in our RF squeak um, uh, configuration. And this is just one of the possibility to build um, this traveling wave parametric amplifier. And it turns out that this configuration uh, can be used to um, promote the amplification, the parametric amplification by means of uh, two schemes. So the four wave mixing uh, scheme or the three wave mixing regime. And what it, it is important here uh, in, in case of quantum illumination is that um, when this nonlinear metamaterial interacts with vacuum, the output states of this uh, Josephson amplifier, the met these metamaterials can be modeled by means of this equation, where K is related to the gain, essentially, or it is the so-called the squeezing parameter of the amplifier. And um, it depends, on, of course, on the circuit parameters and can be modeled by means of a quantum model in case of Three wave or four wave mixing configuration. And of course, uh, by increasing the uh, number, uh, the squeezing parameter K, the um, quadrature of the output tones uh, increase, and um, the squeezing of the quadrature increase. And th this is just an example of, of how, by, by reaching 1.5 value of K, you see that the, the squeezing is um, impressive. So, um, uh, just to give an idea or, or of the relation of uh, the squeezing um, spectrum respect the uh, squeezing parameter values, you see that um, the squeezing spectrum uh, can reach values of up to minus 25 dB in case of K max of around three, and, and is uh, also uh, reach the values of almost minus 10 dB in case of the KMX of 1.5. And the squeezy spectrum is at the base of all the uh, microwave quantum elimination protocols. And of course, um, our, um, th this kind of values are necessary to um, implement um, proper evolving um, sources for microwave entangled photons, of course. So it is important, in, 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 uh, this whole it will concentrate essentially in the model that um, uh, give, up the, give us the possibility to, uh, to understand uh, which is the interaction between uh, quantum states uh, inside the Josephson metamaterials. And this model has been uh, built uh, upon a circuit quantum electron dynamics um, theory. And uh, with, with our models, we, we have modeled uh, essentially um, some uh, classical observables like gain noise figures and noise temperature, noise temperature. But what is uh, mo most important is that with a quantum uh, model, one can, uh, of course, uh, predict what is the quantum behavior, for example, the occupancy probability distribution of arbitrary quantum state in input and 
than we can predict with which is the uh, um, quantum state in output. Um, so I will give a, a quick over, overview of which is the, the model that will govern the interaction with quantum states. So essentially, um, our adjustment some travel with parametric amplifier that we model here is uh, a repetition of our squid base. It contains nonlinear elements that are uh, depicted here by, by this cross that are just some junction. And by means of a um, circuit quantum electron dynamics uh, approach, one can build uh, an Hamiltonian on, uh, that is related to the um, flux difference um, at the nodes of these repetitions of cells. And uh, the flux difference, of course, depends on time and, and, and the Z direction that is the um, uh, space and in, uh, in this uh, Josephson uh, array. And uh, what turns out that by, by exploiting second quantization uh, uh, approach, it is possible to, um, to um, model the interaction uh, and with different tones and uh, decomposing these, the interaction with a, with a number of n tones uh, by supposing that um, that the, these tones are, inter are at, at the beginning are not interacting. So by uh, recalling the classical telegraph equation, one can recover the current that passed through the nodes. And it, it turns out that the current passing through the nodes is related to the nonlinearity uh, given by the nonlinear in inductance of the cell itself. And here, the, for simplicity, the nonlinearity is given by the uh, nonlinear function f and l here. And, and uh, this nonlinearity is at the core of the amplification of, this, uh, uh, of these amplifiers, of course, and of course, are the core of the uh, production of entangled microwave photons. And so um, by solving essentially this implicit really nonlinear relation with the sum approximation, the first approximation is that we uh, approximate um, um, this e equation by introducing single multimodal interaction. So um, there we, we count for um, the interaction of only one photons with other photons only once. And of course, we uh, tailor expand the nonlinearity of this um, nonlinear function in order to uh, account for mode interaction and for mode interaction that are responsible for the three wave and the four wave mixing regime. And um, it turns out that uh, in the case of uh, RS grid based Josephson traveling wave parametric amplifier, it is possible to tune the uh, three way mixing and four way mixing regime by, by exchanging the magnetic flux that pierce the RF squid. And, and this re uh, reflects the fact that the coefficient of the Hamiltonian are uh, independently tunable by means of the, Fili the delta phi DC that is uh, magnetic uh, flux uh, that is a turn off for, for the, our kind of um, traveling wave parametric amplifier. And of course, um, now we have built um, a model for the um, interaction of uh, quantum states. And uh, with this model, uh, uh, that is essentially an Hamiltonian, we can predict the interaction of arbitrary uh, quantum state in input um, that um, uh, can be um, evaluated in with uh, some other approximation. Uh, one of the most common approximation is the depleted and classical pump approximation, where um, the microwave pump tone that uh, enters the uh, amplifier is, of course, uh, undepleted and um, one can assume that is the amplitude is so high that it can be uh, um, assumed as classical. And so the signal frequency uh, omega is um, treated with this um, standard equation where you can see that the signal frequency omega is related to the um, dagger operator uh, A omega prime and this omega prime is the idler mode. So there, there's, a, um, of course, an interaction between different modes, the omega and the omega prime mode by means of parametric down to conversion. And it is, uh, equation can be um, simplified in this way. And of course, th this is at the, at the core of the amplification and, and the creation of quantum states in output. And of course, with this um, this framework, in this framework, we can calculate gain uh, of amplifiers uh, 
uh, by introducing um, realistic um, electrical parameters. Uh, and so we can calculate the bandwidth uh, as a function, for example, of the um, normalized um, current, uh, pumped current, respect to the critical current of Josephson junction, of course. And again, turns out to be the, the, mod the modulus square of U, that is, that was the coefficient of the um, signal um, operator um, in, in coming into the amplifier. And we can also calculate more exotic um, evaluators like, like noise figure. And for example, we, we uh, played a little bit with uh, just by tuning quantum state that enters the, um, the amplifier. And for example, here you can see that our models predict the output, the, the noise figure uh, in the bandwidth um, as a function of the normal, normalized pump power uh, entering the, uh, the amplifier for different quantum states, uh, quantum bimodal coherent states. And here you can see that uh, it is possible with our model to essentially predict um, different behavior uh, by varying the um, quantum state um, of the idler, for example, tone respect uh, to the um, signal tone. And also another possibility with a, with a quantum model is to predict the noise temperature. Um, and essentially the noise temperature has been modeled um, by assuming a, a bose einstein distribution uh, of the um, occupancy uh, of the um, omega mode. And, and so it, it is possible with, the, with our quantum model, it is possible to predict the, the uh, noise temperature as a function of again of the pump power and of the bandwidth itself but uh, what is most uh, interesting in case of the um, entangled photo generation is the fact that um, our model can um, predict the occupancy probability distribution of arbitrary quantum states and for example, this is an exotic um, um, picture that uh, represent the interaction uh, of um, Fox state inputs, different Fox state inputs um, in the amplifier as a function of the traveling time of these tones inside the, the uh, traveling uh, wave parametric amplifier and uh, normalized on, uh, on the traveling time. So uh, uh, essentially at the end of this graph, uh, you see the output of the amplifier at the beginning uh, um, at zero value, you see the um, uh, initial state as it enters uh, inside the amplifier. So you see it, by this graph, you see the evolution, for example, of a Fox state input um, three zero uh, evolves in this way. And uh, of course, there is no recombination possibility among uh, zero Fox um, uh, since the idler is in the um, vacuum state. And once the um, input mode, um, input state um, turns out to, to be in, in a non-vacuum state for the other mode, is it possible that um, these two uh, other and signal modes interact? And it is possible that um, the amplifiers um, react in different ways. So the, the, the quantum state evolves in such a way that the, there is the possibility that two uh, photons, one from the uh, signal and one from the other interacts, and then at the output you, you had um, a stage one, and that there's also the possibility then two photons interact and you have at the end uh, uh, a state that is the state one zero. Of course, um, in case of um, entering signals six six, uh, of course there's the possibility that all six, this, all these six photons interact, and at the end you get a, a vacuum state. And that is um, a crucial, um, uh, not trivial um, prediction of our quantum model in case of um, Fox state input, Fox input states. And uh, if you're interested in more details regarding the uh, interaction. Um, of um, traveling away with quantum states. Uh, here I have reported two uh, papers. One are both on the archive. And the first one is essentially the quantum model I, I uh, quickly uh, presented here. And the second one uh, is focused more on the um, um, evaluation of noise figure of merit and um, the noise temperature of uh, traveling wave amplifiers uh, working in three wave mixing and four wave mixing regime. And in conclusion, I've uh, briefly introduced um, the, the possibility to 
to exploit traveling weight parametric amplifier as a source for uh, non-classical radiation, for example, that can be exploited in a neural source configuration for the calibration of a single microwave photon detector. And I've um, briefly introduced the, the model for a quantum state interaction, and I focus on the particular uh, vacuum state that is essential for the microwave uh, quantum illumination that can be uh, produced with a um, traveling wave parametric amplifier. And this Chumot squid vacuum state, of course, is modeled and can be tuned experimentally by, by tuning the parameters of the uh, amplifier itself. And, and I've tried to show you how these microwave quantum uh, illumination protocols and the heralded microwave sources are potentially enhanced by the uh, application of uh, traveling wave parametric amplifier. And finally, I, I want to thank you all for your attention and uh, thank you all the partners and projects that support this, this uh, exciting uh, research. Thank you, Emanuele. Okay. Uh, please, any, any questions uh, for Emanuele? Yes. Uh, Claudio, yes. Uh, Claudio, Michael? yes, yes, yes. Hi, uh, ciao, Emanuele. Uh, ciao. Concerning what, what, one of your last points in which you have different Fox states in input and, and you have different outputs, possible outputs, do you think there is a way to engineer the, the input uh, Fox state for, for the idler to, to improve the, the detection of photons from, from the signal? Okay, uh, our model predicts uh, the interaction of different Fox states. Uh, it turns out if you want to exploit the uh, squeezing capabilities um, and, for example, uh, the nonlinear interaction of amplifiers, it turns out that the uh, initial state should be the vacuum state. So the, the um, most powerful uh, entangled source it turns out to be the vacuum state. Um, and it is the one that gives you the, the um, most efficient uh, quantum illumination protocols and the heralding source. Uh, so um, somehow, somehow the the, uh, the, in, 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 the others should, in, in case uh, you want to um, increase the uh, signal to noise ratio, for example, for the detection of a single microwave photon at a frequency omega, it, it is better to have the idler at zero, uh, not to, to other uh, values. Okay, thank you. Uh, Professor Hakonen. Thank you for a very nice talk. I would be interested in, in the influence of losses on your results. It seems that you, you neglect those in the calculation. Yeah, and, and this, model, this model is a simplified model and we, we have made several assumptions. And uh, of course it can be um, um, further uh, expanded. And at this present moment, we have not introduced any um, dissipation in, in any um, electrical uh, circuit. So, uh, of course, the dissipation can come from the dielectric uh, interaction or um, internal reflections or um, non-idealities of the uh, circuit parameters, of course. At the present moment, the, the, uh, the quantum model it was intended to, uh, uh, to give um, an overview of the quantum evolution of states in, a, in an ideal device. But any, any ideas how much the results will be degraded with loss? Let's say 3 dB loss. Uh, let's, let's say um, the um, quantum evolution of states is deep, deeply connected to uh, the gain. So uh, in real, real um, amplifiers has already demonstrated a high bandwidth with a again, higher um, than 20 dB. And so the, uh, essentially the um, decay, the squeezing parameter 
uh, for the gain that is 20 dB uh, reach um, values of two. And so we, we, we can essentially assume that this kind of um, um, amplifier behave uh, almost ideally in case of uh, quantum evolution. Of course, um, there are no non-idealities of the, the this amplifier that are not modeled, uh, maybe second harmonic generation or or other interactions. But but in in case of uh, dissipation, for example, it, it turns out that um, in, in case of um, High gain uh, uh, real real amplifiers that that should not uh, uh, interact too much. Of course, uh, to to give you a quantitative uh, answer, uh, we need to, to make calculations. Thank you. Yes, uh, um, Professor Fistul. Okay, and just uh, some. Uh, First of all, uh, thank you for nice uh, talk. And then uh, my question is uh, how your analysis uh, depends on, uh, for example, on the number of uh, junctions and number of these uh, nonlinear elements. And also um, uh, what happens if you have uh, some disorder in parameters? Uh, can you say something about this? Yeah, the um, essentially in the undepleted uh, pump approximation, uh, as that is the most heavy approximation that probably we have um, uh, effectively performed in our in our model. Uh, the um, value of the cells, the number of the cells, um, is. Um, the responsible for an exponential gain um, and, and then an exponential um, increase of the squeezing parameter and of, and of the interaction of quantum states. Of course, in case of a real um, amplifier, at, at a certain point, the pump cannot be uh, assumed as uh, undepleted. And, and then it turns out that, uh, um, that, the, the, that the pump power uh, starts to, to, to be depleted and, and the interaction between signal and other is not so efficient, uh, it is no more efficient at all. So um, the, essentially in, in an ideal case, the, the gain, the squeezing parameter and all the other parameters of interaction are exponentially on the number of the elements, but, but uh, is, you need to, uh, to remember that th this is due to the fact that you treat the um, um, the pampa is undepleted, but the, the, the effect of the depletion is, is seen and um, can be appreciated in real experiment. And uh, regarding the uh, dispersion of the um, values of, of um, electrical circuit like, uh, like um, the critical current or the uh, inductances, of course, these uh, deeply affect the um, performances of this kind of uh, amplifiers and mathematicians, since they introduce uh, non-idealities that can introduce uh, internal reflections or, um, for example, um, several uh, higher order uh, interaction of the um, intermixing uh, of modes and, um, and that, that is then is crucial to, to have in, in the real devices to have uh, as the smallest as possible um, spread of the electrical parameters. So at the present moment, the model um, is based on a needle device that uh, has uh, almost ideal uh, electrical parameters, but it, it can be extended to, um, to work with real uh, distribution of parameters. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, hi, thanks for the nice talk. Um, I was once looking at parametric amplifiers up around at higher frequencies um, with your three wave mixing. I believe it was a similar type. It was with guys at NIST. Um, is there any restriction? You, you had your pump as the highest frequency, but that's not necessary, is it? You could be one of the lower frequencies mm. with your pump in your three wave mixing process. Yeah, you, you, you mean, um, 
okay, in, in case of, of three wave mixing, of course, the pump power, the pump tone should be at, at the highest uh, frequency, respect the signal either. Yeah, be. And, and, and it's limited by the technology you decide to, to work with. Um, in case of, of course, in case of aluminum technology, it's, you are limited by the superconductivity of aluminum and the, the plasma frequency of the um, junction and the coplanar waveguide. In case of niobium technologies, of course, you can increase this, uh, a little bit this pump frequency, but uh, it depends on the circuits and values and on the technologies you, you are interested in working with. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, um, um, Manuel, thank you very much. Okay, that's a great project, and we we are eager to see it uh, uh, to see the results, of course.